So good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. This is Dr. Franklin, and I will be presenting to you an SPSS tutorial. Specifically, this will be dealing with how you can calculate the one sample t-test within the statistical package for social sciences. So if you don't have the virtual computer lab open already so that you can access another remote desktop and use SPSS, make sure you do that. If you are on campus, you have the luxury of finding a computer lab and getting on a device that has SPSS. So make sure you do that so that you'll be able to follow along with me as I complete the steps involved in calculating the one sample t-test. So with that being said, I'm going to proceed with step one that is listed in your assignment. The first step involves you going to variable view at the bottom of your screen. So right now you're in data view because that tab is a glow. So we'll toggle over to variable view, simply select it and you'll see variable view become a glow. You will be creating one variable based on the information in your assignment. Your first row will represent grade in variable view. All you'll be inputting into SPSS for this assignment is grades. So each row in SPSS represents a variable. So we will simply select the first row underneath name and put in grades. Once we do that, uh, you will see that across the column headers that things are pre-populated. Now, after you enter the name for your variable, you have the option of selecting a type of variable. Um, there are various types of variables that you can insert into SPSS. We will simply keep this numeric. And you also have the option of moving forward and expanding the width of your numerical variable. So this allows you to dictate how long the numbers you will input into data view can be. And you're also able to do that with the decimal places. So we will be entering in digits that have a width of two, uh, but we don't necessarily need to uh, make adjustments here. You can just leave it as is since having width and decimals that are far and above beyond what you need is okay and you just want to err on the side of making sure that the width isn't too small now going over to labels you can simply add in an extended name for your variables this exam this extended name will show up when you calculate your one sample t-test. In other words, it'll show up in the output. As far as values, you can assign labels that are associated with certain numbers if you need to for your variable. If you have nominal or ordinal or maybe even in some instances interval data, you should be doing this. Otherwise, you're going to bypass it. Uh, we have a variable that is very much ratio, starts from zero. That zero indicates an absence of the variable. And ratio variables have all the defining characteristics of nominal, ordinal, and interval variables. So we don't necessarily need to go to values to assign labels to certain numerics along the grade intervals. This is a header that you will utilize if you have some missing numerics in your data set. Um, that is not applicable to this assignment, so don't even worry about that. You can keep the columns at eight. You can go with the right alignment. And in terms of measure, uh, make sure if you're working with the ratio variable that you select scale. Okay, scale involves interval and ratio data. So you'll want to make sure you select that. Once you do all of that, you have efficiently set up your variable. Toggle back over to data view, and now you'll see grades at the top of the column header for one variable. And notice how everything else just says VAR, VAR, VAR. Um, so these are instances of variables that 
um, haven't been set up that don't necessarily apply to your study, but these will change if you were to set up additional variables beyond grades. From here, what you need to do is simply insert your data. Um, so go into your SPSS assignment, you'll insert all of your grades. Okay, so grades are inserted into the data view part of SPSS. Please keep in mind for my students that I've adjusted two of these grades, so make sure that you're not just doing step-by-step -step what I'm doing, but that you're relying on your assignment to be the guide for the data that you enter. From here, uh, to calculate the one sample t-test, you will click analyze on the toolbar then you'll scroll down to compare means and then from compare means you will go to one sample t-test now what you do here is you take the highlighted column label for the set of scores which is grade okay and you will move that over into the test variable box and then based on the information in your assignment, what you will do in the test value box at the bottom of the one sample t-test window is enter the hypothesized value for the mean from the null hypothesis. Uh, in this particular case, it is 75. So 75 is the population parameter that you're given or the population mean and then these final grades consist of the sample and ultimately a sample mean will be calculated from it and that will be compared to the population mean of 75. From there you click OK and once you click OK it gives you a data output screen. You see that there's a one sample statistics um, descriptive table laid out for you letting you know that you had eight individuals in your sample on average the grades were 67.75 uh, the standard deviation was 20 points and the standard error of the mean is 7.38 if you round now if you come down to the actual one sample t-test this is the t that you would end up with if you uh, did 67.75 minus 75 over the standard error of the mean, you would end up with negative 0.982. The degree of freedom would be seven. And it is not significant because this alpha level is not 0.05 or below, okay? So that's important to note when you're trying to figure out if the one sample t-test is significant or not. Uh, if in the SIG two-tailed column, you don't see a uh, decimal that's below 0.05, then you know it's not significant. OK, so that's important to, to keep in mind. So we got an insignificant t-test. In other words, 67.75 is not significantly different from 75, probably because, as you can see, the variation is rather large. Gives you the mean difference. OK, uh, essentially, if you took 75 from 67.75, you would have 7.25. Right. And then it gives you confidence intervals based on the statistic that was calculated. So I hope that this was helpful. Let me know if you have any comments, questions or concerns, and I look forward to interacting with you soon. Take care.